They have some great book titles, as you can see right there, things that, as I said, are aphorisms. You also have chapter titles like Air, Air, Gimme Air, that's what you're saying, but no. We got more Vanity Publishing. We want to say that this particular book is a, an interesting parable about three guys who go out on a fishing trip and discuss Christ. Yes, that's what it's about. It's very interesting stuff. Also, we want to salute people who want to educate our children, teach them about the fine arts. Some people have enough money to do ongoing series of Vanity Publishing books. This lady has done Woody Watches the Masters. This is American artist. She's got poems about and little sing-songs about Winslow Homer, John Audubon, and yes, one, a favorite of mine, but uh, never saw him done in musical style. Yes, it's Edward Hopper. We have a little poem about Edward Hopper here. We're going to read this to you. It's on the next page, too. Hopper was a loner, but a contented one was he. He loved the peace and quiet and life beside the sea. Old buildings were his pleasure. To do them he would choose. To use the light as he saw fit to create a mood. Well, it doesn't really rhyme, but, you know, it's pretty interesting stuff to be doing a poem about Edward Hopper for children. Also, a little song sung to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy. Hopper had a personal style. It could express some mood. And every time he did paint it, please does all it could. Um, okay, then we get into another gentleman you never thought you'd hear about in a children's book. Pollock, a poem. Jackson's Pollock was of our time, like the X-ray and theory of relativity. Jackson Pollock poured and dripped his paint and expressed himself quite fittingly. It's kind of like an Ogden Nash kind of a sing-song thing going on there. We want to salute this lady for trying to teach kids about Jackson Pollock in a very unusual style. We also want to say that the books that fascinate us the most, we've done them on the show before, are joke books that these companies publish. Yes, a joke book like Just Thinking. Now, this is not a joke book like we had one a few years back. That's life. Jokes and anecdotes. These are merely observations, but this woman wants us to laugh. Yes, I haven't even read some of these to our camera woman. Let's see if these raise our hackles and just remind us of things that happen in our daily life. This lady, Julianne, whatever her name is, wants us to think about daily things like when you brush your teeth and you gag like you are going to vomit, and sometimes you really do. Talking to yourself and really enjoying it. Getting all excited and jumping and up, up and down by yourself. When you have to talk to people in public and everyone tells you, pretend the people are sitting in their underwear, how true is this really? You are talking to someone and they spit, but you keep talking like they didn't. Laugh or not. Excuse me, but you have toilet paper on your shoe. Static cling. The Unexpected Burp. See, this puts David Letterman's top ten list to shame, these kind of books. Walking down the street, you bump into a pole and say, excuse me. Listening to the radio and thinking you're the singer and performing on stage. Taking a drink and it goes down the wrong pipe and you choke and choke and choke. Leaving the hairdressers hating your hair. When you go out dancing to a club and you have to go to the bathroom, a lot of these are geared for women, obviously. It's written by a lady. The ladies' room is always the pits. You have the females who need to pack some more makeup on their faces and spray some more hairspray as if they didn't have enough. It's torture to go in. Here's another one, totally unrelated but seemingly related. Waiting, waiting, and waiting. That one I particularly like. Being lost. The needle the dentist gives you. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Forgetting the person on hold. Car nose pickers. That's one I really like. All dressed up in stain. The person in the fast food lane who for some reason does not like you. Do they really spit in your food? Give someone a little authority. Dot, dot, dot. Do you wonder each time you touch something in public like banisters, toilet flushers, light, see, it's, it's making our camera woman laugh, light switches, elevator buttons, escalators, etc. If you will catch a disease, she's wondering. Fortune cookies. Your fly is down. People who wear mirrored sunglasses, what are they looking at? Are they looking at your eyes or something else? Should people blow their noses in public? When you look at a baby and say, wow, I used to be that small. How amazing to grow up. And my personal favorite, Salada tea bags. I don't know Salada tea. I just think this is terrific stuff. You aren't going to find joke books, those old Larry Wilde books, the official whatever they were, all those great joke books we used to have in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Goddamn. These Vanity Press books are truly amazing stuff. We'll be back in one minute with just, in just a few seconds, with our last Vanity Press book of the night. We're heading into the home stretch now. We want to definitely get to the instructional videos, but I wouldn't be worth my salt if I didn't haul out this particular book title every single time we do Vanity Publishing. I truly love this and definitely should be hung over your desk at work if you want it to be. Otherwise, you're contented or something. But we also have a chapter title here from a book. Advising young girls on yeah the question that of course is the question as we say yes 
Cautionary Tales for Young Ladies, which brings us to our next book. Yes, this is an extreme case. This is something, we only have a few of these that are this extreme. This is a bizarre book that I had shown the cover of on the program. I'm going to show the cover while I read just a very few brief passages. It's written in a very high-minded style, just really kind of almost shrieking prose. It is called Sutured. This is from 1981. This is a cautionary tale written by an educator. It really is written by a woman. It was a woman who wanted to curb the tide of teenage sexuality and just teenagers not learning and teenagers drinking and smoking and having sex all the time. So in the book she posits a black mother mama and a daughter named Becca, Rebecca, and she gives us once again, as we did in the first book there, the um, screwed with abandon, a lot of tangents, a lot of tangents in this book. This is supposed to be a book about curbing her daughter's sexual appetite and she talks about the size of her big feet at one point the mama she has a little song she does take my tarsals take my tarsals doc give me pig feet give me wee feet that i want a lot i'm reading this straight from the book i'm kind of stunned i read this book cover to cover this in tongue house there's only a few of these suckers i've read cover to cover the modern woman squeezed big feet matched by strong healthy amazon frames into tiny shoes shoes that served only boneless feet god give me tiny feet um, back to the topic, she does actually go on and on about how the mother, whose name is Beta, short for Betsy, about how the men and women sought her company. The men could hurt her worse, for their plans would include an insane violation of her flesh, tossing her around like a dirty, ragged mop, nipping and whipping on her like a dog on a cat. They wanted pretty live toys to maul and mutilate as if the dolls possessed no souls and absolutely no sense. After satiating enormous appetites, Mama would go in the garbage. She knew this. She jollied and mingled with the men and women, but carefully avoided them all. They called her Hinkety. She actually gives us some interesting details about words that aren't in Webster's that were Southern black dialect of the time. I'm not sure what time this book is set in, but whenever her childhood was, there were words like hinkety, and she defines them for us in certain food terms, because she's also a chef and gives us different recipes in the book. She actually also has some wonderful stuff about how she wants to suture her daughter, but first she wants to suture herself. She comes upon this idea because there's too many men who want to have sex with her, so indeed, yes, you've guessed it, you people out there, you women are probably crossing your legs, yes, she would pay a doctor for surgery, she would be sutured, sutured, she would have herself altered so that no male could ever force himself upon her, she would be sewn so tightly, any damn young gentleman who forced his way into her flesh would suffer the agony of dying, the blinding pain of appealing penis, a sad penis, mutilated trying literally to enter a keyhole, a banana split, trembling blood, and rolling the warrior over the ground to die. How nice she thought, how genteel to blush. Do blacks blush? Drop her eyes and murmur, I have been sutured, your royal highness. I can have no sex. Forgive me, massa. No, sorry, boss. Nothing cooking, friend. Um, we go back in the later passages. This is... Uh our camera woman's getting a little freaked out by this. She also has these horrifying tangen tangents. I don't want to gross you people out. You people might even be having a late night snack. She has this, this vacuum she uses... To to clear up her pustules. We're not going to get into that at all, but she does also undress for her daughter to show her the body that produced her, to show the daughter the mother's body. Look, baby, look! You squirmed out of this opening. My vagina, you shot out face down, looking at my asshole and tearing my body into shreds. Look, baby, look! Write your filthy notes. Tell your buddies that it's really so. Your mama showed you. Babies come from vaginas. It's true. It's true. She daughter buries her head in her pillow. No wonder. Tell your pals that a penis entered my vagina and spit future hell for me. Spit future hell. Write more notes. Tell that women are merely waste baskets for a man's hot spit. You refers to sperm and spit throughout the book. Women are garbage cans. Tell that a man will go from hole to hole if he can lie enough enough of them. This is reminiscent of our scum manifesto. We did that several episodes back. Readings of that before the movie came along. We were doing our Warhol episode long before the movie. <laughs> tell them, uh, shortly before, tell that a man wants only sex, not a woman. Tell that a man carries his guts only in his phallus, not in his soul, his heart, his head. This woman has an axe to grind. Uh, definitely by the end of the book, she's actually done it to her daughter she's or she's planning it in this lovely passage we have here uh, there's a lot of scary stuff in this book but the actual moment where she proposes it to her Irish friend who's the nurse is going to assist her in the surgery shutting up her daughter closing it up I have read on the construction of the vagina I would make a half inch slash on each side of the anterior edge of the vulva this woman definitely had medical knowledge um, the same half inch on each side I'd suture raw flesh together each side with stu two stitches don't you think that would do it? There would be no obstruction of urine nor menstrual flow. I'd section the posterior under the vulva the same way, the same two stitches. 
Then the daughter discusses it with her friends at school. She tells everyone at school that she's been sewn up by mom, and this is our final passage for Vanity Publishing tonight. Tell me, Becca, tell me, is it true? I guess I'll tell it. I don't care. I'm a real freak now. Mama sutured me. Sutured you? What's that? She took stitches in my vagina. I can't have sex anymore. Never? Never again? Oh, yes, I can have sex, but a doctor will have to open my vagina. Open your vagina? Do you have periods? Can you pee? Oh, yes, I'm not sewn completely, and Mama says you do not urinate from your vagina. Girls have a tiny tube from the bladder called a urethra. I think illustrations are required for this, which carries u urine off. It's outside your vagina. I just can't have sex. I would be torn to pieces, and the man would have the skin ripped off his thing. That's the end of our Vanity Publishing segment for tonight.